Well, a very good welcome to you. Lovely to have you with us again. Yesterday, I put out a message saying that I was going to ask you to read Philippians three times, to read the intro chapter three times, and then to once again go back to the book and read all four chapters at least once after that. Now, what has happened is that in the interim, we've had a situation where some of the folks that are closer to me have said, we haven't had a chance to finish it, to read it. Now, part of the Bible study is for you to become familiar with the scriptures. Very often, men and women will listen to somebody preaching. They will take away what they gain by the, possibly the application of scripture. But you know what? It's the word of God that works effectually in us. So what I'm going to do is that we're not going to go into the Bible study from a point of this presentation, but I'm going to plead, I'm going to implore is a word that Paul uses, you to go to the book of Philippians. It doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense initially, just read it through and I'm going to ask you to read it through five times. And as you read it through those five times, if you have the time, read through it the first and maybe the second time just to get familiar with the general concepts. You can read it through slower, the third, and then maybe the fourth and the fifth, and then you can look at each verse in the wording. Now, if you make that time, you've got a week until next Wednesday evening. I promise you, it is an amazing book. I'm going to touch on a few of the things about it so that you just have a background. And of course, one of the most important questions is, is it a book that God has written as a direct insight and instruction to us today? Or was it like a book of the Old Testament that was historic and it was for information related to the progress of not only Abraham and the nation of Israel, because prior to that, there was no specific nation. It was nations. But is it written to us? And that's what I'm going to answer for you now so that your preparation is founded in it. Number one is that who wrote it? Paul the Apostle. What's significant about that? He was used to write to us today in what the Bible calls the body of Christ that will conclude when Christians are taken out of this world at what is known as either the rapture or the resurrection of you and I in what God has come to prepare us for. So besides that, I also must mention that how many books did Paul write? Well, he wrote 13 from Romans right through to Philemon, and they go Romans. And then, of course, you've got First and Second Corinthians, and then you've got those books that end in the shins. Now, if you don't know how to remember them, many of you have heard me say this, but it's quite an easy one. And that is a Gentile is a non-Jew. A Jew is not allowed to eat pork chops. So what do the Gentiles do? The Gentiles eat pork chops. G-E-P-G. -G. Galatians, Ephesians. What does the P stand for? The book we're doing, Philippians. And lastly, the C stands for Colossians. Now, if you're with me on that, what follows those? Then you've got the books that follow, which begin with the T's, and that is First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus, and that makes twelve. And the last one is Philemon. Okay, now I've given you that bit of background. Okay, Paul writes this book. That means that it is written to us, and it is written for us. But the rest of the Bible is written for us, but it is not written to us specifically, because God's focus was different. And that's what I just want to highlight for you today, is why would God use Paul to write 13 books that comprise just short of 50% of the New Testament? Why use him? Why not take those who knew the message and use them and just get them to teach Paul? But in actual fact, Paul speaks to Peter, and he has to withstand him to the face and say, but why are you only going to Jews? Because that was the whole kingdom expectation. Now, why would God use him to write these books if the message had already been written as it was, and Jesus taught the Old Testament in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? He never taught a New Testament. He revealed certain things about God, but he never brought a new message. 
it was the same message that John had preached before he even took on his message, and that was repent and be baptized for the kingdom of God is at hand, and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's why the Lord's Prayer includes those words, that the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, surely God's will is pretty perfect in heaven. Well, that indicates clearly it would have been a perfect will here as well. Now, having said that, what I want to do is to say, was the message not complete that, that Jesus gave to Peter? No, but it was subject to the people believing in him, him establishing this nation of Israel as a kingdom with supernatural powers, super ability for people to do what was right and be righteous. And from that, then he could take it to the other nations who would see the health, the wealth, the prosperity, the resurrection from the dead, the signs, the wonders of healings, miracles. And you know what would happen is that when they saw that, they would be attracted to this God of Israel who had given them the power of these things like miracles and signs and wonders and healings. Now, there's no indication that had they received it, those who were healed would have died. Because part of the promise to Abraham was eternal life, and the focus was the earth. That's not how it is today. So Philippians is written to us. It is written by Paul the Apostle. It is directly written for us. And amongst many of the things that it is, is an incredible encouragement to us, because it encapsulates our place in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So um, what I want to say to you is that God has given us Philippians and it's directly related to your walk with the Lord. And that's what we want to study. Now, if some of you have, as I say, there are a few who've said that, oh, that's a bit close yesterday to today, three times plus read it, plus think about it. Please, I am going to ask you, will you please read it through five times? It's only four chapters, less than the leading story on a newspaper four chapters, and I'm asking you please to read it through five times before next Wednesday to think it through. And here's something that is very interesting, is if it's a new message, why did God dispense it? Because Israel wouldn't respond. And God said, if the Gentiles are not going to hear this message through the Jews, I'm going to make you jealous. Read Romans 11. I'm going to make you jealous because I'm going to take my glory and my grace and I'm going to give it to the Gentiles. And I hope that you as Jews are going to become jealous that I'm dealing with them who you got a problem with. And that's why Jesus, and I dealt with it, dealt in, in Matthew 15 with the woman who he called a dog. We're allowed to be called a dog. You with me? Now, that's why it's so important. Um, so what I'm saying is please read it five times. Read the first chapter five times on its own after you've read it a few times. Finish off by reading it through. And you know what? And listen, please, to what I'm saying. Your walk with the Lord will change over a period of time as you get your mind and your thoughts into the Word of God. But the Word of God gets God's thoughts and mind into you. I am very, very anxious when I hear somebody say, well, I think that's how God would work. And somebody said to me, well, I think that that is how God would work. Because I don't think he would do something, and he spoke about what he was talking about. We can't think what God would do. He wrote it in black and white, so we wouldn't guess, we wouldn't think, we wouldn't feel. Because one person feels God's saying this, another one feels that. No. The message we have is different from that of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because that was Jesus talking to the nation of Israel about him becoming their king and their Messiah. But from the book of Acts, chapter 9, Saul of Tarsus is saved, and he writes these books as a new glorious message, and Philippians is one of them. That is not only extremely encouraging, it is extremely powerful in our lives, in encouragement that God gives us, in insight in how to pray, in the love and the bond that should exist between those who have tasted of and enjoyed the grace of God. So I trust that that will be helpful to you. And I must say, thank you for joining us. Your preparation is going to replace the time I normally would have spent, but please don't overlook it. You are the first beneficiary of knowing something more about the Word of God 
and your family are definitely greatest beneficiaries second to you. Until we do Philippians next week, be enriched by it until we speak again.